Good morning, Saturday night students. Now we have seen how Porsche has been explaining certain things if it is very easily said and done. If things were easily said and done, then chapels would become huge churches for worship. A poor man's cottage or hut would turn out to be palaces. Life would be better. Then a teacher practicing what he preaches. It is not that easy for a teacher to follow his own teaching or to follow his own preaching. Then she crit criticizes the brain. Says the brain does not have any control over the youth. Or maybe the youth does not like to listen to any kind of good advice. Now it has been compared to a rabbit who has also given good advice to be careful. The hunters have already set traps, nets in your part where you leap and jump and play. So you got to be very careful. But he also overlooks this good advice. And then he gets trapped. Now he is crippled. He cannot run. He cannot run for safety. He cannot save his own life. But what has that got to do with Porsche? Why is she talking like this? That is the question. Why is she weary of this world? Why is she fed up of this world? In Act 1, Scene 1, we did not know the reason of Antonio's sadness. Here we come to know why she is sad. Okay. But this reasoning is not in the fashion to choose me a husband. Now whatever I have reasoned out. Okay. It has got nothing to do for me to choose a husband. Oh, the word, oh me, the word choose. Now, oh me, the word choose means, now what she meant is, I may neither choose whom I would. Means, now the choice of my marriage, the most important decision in my life that I should make. Okay, I cannot choose the man whom I want to marry. In other words, the man whom I love. No refuse whom I dislike. Now refuse whom I dislike. That means the right to choose a husband of her own has been snatched away by her father. He has taken away the freedom of Portia marrying or choosing a husband of her own choice. So that is why she is a bit annoyed. She is not in favor. Now let us see ahead. So is the will of a willing daughter. Okay, the decision of marrying a boy of my own has been curbed, curbed by the will of a dead father, has been restricted or taken away by the will of a dead father. Now your will is used in two places. So I told you, you got to underline the sentence. So is the will, circle the word will of a living daughter curved by the will of a dead father. Circle the second will. Now such kind of words, same spelling, same word, same pronunciation, the meaning is different. 
Your will means the decision that she is making or the choice she is going to make of her own. Okay. And the will of a dead father means a written document which states that she will marry according to what's written in this document, in this will. So before he could die, he made a will that my daughter does not have the right to choose a husband of her own choice, but her marriage will be based on my will. This written document. So now she has been snatched away the freedom of choosing a husband of her own choice. So that has annoyed her. That has made her get fed up of this world. The most important decision of my life has been taken away by my father. And now he is dead. Now I cannot even change the terms and conditions of that written document. So now she says, I cannot choose whom I like and I cannot refuse whom I dislike. Neither I can choose one nor refuse none. That means whosoever according to her father's device, she has to marry that person. Now Nerissa is being a very good friend to her, like an advisor, and she is trying to explain to Portia about her father's decision. Says your father was ever virtuous and holy men at their death have good inspirations. Says your father was a very religious and pious man. And such holy people, before they die, they get some divine power. They get some instinct to predict the future. So maybe on the basis of that, he has devised this lottery system. Okay. The lottery that he had devised in these three chests of gold. You know, the word chest is used. Later on, we'll use the word casket. So I'll go on with casket. So the three caskets are the gold casket, silver casket, and the lead casket. Okay. Whereof means whosoever chooses his meaning chooses you. That means according to the father's advice, Whoever chooses the right casket, he is going to choose you. Will no doubt never be chosen by any rightly, but one who shall rightly love. Now according to this system, nobody will be able to choose you or choose the right casket unless and until they truly love you. They must love you. They shouldn't be loving your wealth. Only the man or the person or the suitor, whosoever will love you genuinely, I think he will be the only one who would choose the right casket. But what warmth is there in your affection towards any of these? Now, what is your decision? Now six suitors have already come. So what have you decided? What should we do about these six suitors that have already arrived? Then she says, okay, fine. Name them and I shall describe them. And on the basis of my description, you will be the judge to see whether any of these suitors 
according to my father's advice whether it is genuine or not so now she is going to describe the suitors and on the basis of that we'll come to know whether she is in favor of marrying him or he is not what is it in a position or he is not capable of marrying her okay now the last part is i just wind up your is this particular scene now this part regarding the suitor is just like when people negotiate for an arranged marriage so a couple of relations from the boy side comes to the girl side there are some more elderly people and the girls friends are also they also all come and they get together to have this negotiation usually the girl is kept in another room with all her friends and the boy is brought to the hall room they he is made to sit on the sofa with his relatives okay dressed up well and then the girls from behind the curtain for one excuse to have a look at the groom the dulla babu then they go and say hey, it's got naak bahut lamba hai kaan bahut lamba hai daant nikla hua hai kala hai gora hai okay they at once they go and they criticize and if means whatever they observe they go and tell the people behind the curtain then the girl is also being observed very minutely as she is coming with the tray they are all looking at her chal the way she is walking okay and then the way she puts the smile she gives and all that and then they are talking to her they are looking the way she replies the way she talks then they look at her how bahut khoobsurat hai but then one will say naak dekhi hai daant dekhi hai so in that way what happens they keep observing and then the decision is made whether they should go ahead with the marriage or not okay. if it clicks well and good but if they both criticize the girl is criticized by the boy side or the boy is criticized by the girl side then this doesn't work out so like that poshia is going to describe the suitors and on the basis of her description we will come to know whether she is in favor of marrying the suitor or not and whether her father's decision of her marriage whether it is proved right or wrong okay thank you we shall continue with the next class